Okay, so in this lecture, I'm going to be discussing qualitative analysis of differential equations. So if we have a differential equation y prime equals f of y, then in principle, we can solve this using separation of variables because this is a separable equation, but it might not be convenient to do so. We'd have to divide by f of y and then find the antiderivative of one over f of y. If f is a complicated function, that might be impossible to do. Even if it is possible, it might be some really inconvenient formula that we really just don't want to deal with. So sometimes it's enough just to get a rough idea of how the solution is behaving. And we can do this using the following procedure. First, we find equilibrium solutions, which remember are the solutions where y prime is equal to zero, so y is not changing. And we'll see in a minute that these equilibrium solutions are horizontal lines. They divide the plane into several regions. And in, inside each region, the sign of y prime does not change. So we can determine in each region, are the solutions increasing or decreasing? We can determine the concavity in different regions. And then all this information will allow us to sketch what the solution looks like without having to draw like slope fields or anything like that. And this can be really useful, especially if you want to know the long-term behavior of the um, solutions and whether the equilibria are stable or unstable. So let's see an example of how this works in practice. So I'd like to look at the equation y prime equals 6 minus y squared. So first, let's find the equilibrium solutions. So remember, this is where y prime is equal to zero. That means that we'll have, from the differential equation here, six minus y squared equals zero. And if you just rearrange this and take the square root, you see that y has to be plus or minus square root of six. So now, if we sketch the xy plane here, we're going to see that we have these solutions at plus or minus square root of six. And if we start on one of these red lines, then the solution will just stay there forever. Okay, so now we have three regions. We have the region up here above square root of 6, the region between negative square root 6 and square root 6, and then the region below negative square root 6. So let's try to determine whether the solutions are increasing or decreasing in each of these regions. Well, if y is greater than the square root of 6, that means that when we square it, we're going to be in a number bigger than 6 that we're subtracting off. So from our differential equation here, y prime is going to have to be negative. So that means that when we start off above square root 6, the solution is decreasing. The same thing happens if y is less than negative square root 6, because it doesn't matter whether the sign is positive or negative since we're squaring it. If y is in between these two values, then we have y prime is positive because then when we square y it will be less than six so six minus that number will be a positive thing so all this information can be determined just from this differential equation without actually solving anything we can actually say a bit more though we can take the second derivative of y if we take the derivative with respect to t on the left hand side then we see that the derivative is negative two y times y prime so this is an example of implicit differentiation, which we've discussed earlier in the class. So based on the information that we've discovered so far, we can try to see what's happening to the concavity of this function. So if y is less than negative square root six, then we'll see that y is negative. From this analysis here, y prime is negative, 
Um, let's see. I messed something up. Um, ah, right, 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 sorry. There's a minus sign up front also. So there's a minus sign in Y prime. There's a minus sign in Y. Those will cancel out. Then we have another minus sign out front here. So that means that overall, we have a minus sign for Y prime. So it's concave down. Next, let's look at the case when we're between negative square root 6 and 0. So why did I go to 0 here instead of square root 6? Well, the reason is that that's a place where this term changes sign. So we know that y prime can change sign at positive square root 6 and negative square root 6, but y only changes sign at 0. So that's why I have a new point where something interesting can happen at 0. And that's why I look at this interval rather than this interval that I was using up here. So in this region here, y is still negative, but y prime has switched from negative to positive. That means we only have two negative signs now, so the function, the solutions become concave up. Let's see. If 0 is less than y is less than square root 6, then we see by similar arguments that this function has to be concave down again. And then if y is greater than the square root of 6, we see that the function has to be concave up. So how can we now put all this information to practice? Well, let's take a look at our graph here. Let's start with an initial condition where we start above square root of 6. So if we have some initial condition that's up here, then we know y prime is going to be negative and the function is going to be concave up. So that means that the function is decreasing and it will look something like this. Now, the solution can never cross this red line because as it gets closer and closer, the derivative approaches 0. So it just sort of approaches it as we go towards infinity. Now, what happens if we start off with an initial condition less than negative square root of 6? Well, in that case, we have that y prime is going to be negative still, and y double prime is going to be negative, so the function is concave down and decreasing. That means the solutions must look something like this. Now let's take a look at the hard region when we're between square root 6 and negative square root 6. So let's first take a look at if we start off with something down here, what will happen? Well, we know that in this region, y prime is always greater than 0. So we know that the function is going to be increasing. The difficulty comes in from the concavity. We know that if y is negative, the function will be concave up. But once it switches to positive, it has to change to concave down. So that means the solutions will look something like this, and they'll have this inflection point at 0, where the concavity changes. So based on this picture that we've recovered, we can determine, without having actually solved the equation, what will happen to the solutions in the long term. So we see that y equals square root 6 is a stable equilibrium. So as long as the initial condition is above negative square root 6, the solutions will def um, eventually approach square root 6 as we make x larger and larger. But y equals negative square root 6 is an unstable equilibrium because as time goes on, the solutions are all moving away from it. So if we start in this region, the solutions move up towards square root 6. If we start in, down in this region, the solutions just decrease forever. So actually, this is an equation which, even though it's separable, 
we don't at this point have a method to solve it analytically. But we can see that using this sort of analysis, we're able to get a very good picture of what the solutions look like. And we didn't have to do anything with slope fields or anything like that either. So these sorts of techniques are really convenient. They can tell you a lot of useful information. And so I think it's a useful tool to keep in mind when you're analyzing differential equations, especially if it's an equation that you can't solve. This can be a good way to get an idea of how the solutions to the system you're looking at are going to behave.